was last in my class. Your theories are the worst kind of popular tripe. Your methods are sloppy and your conclusions are highly questionable. All right, everybody. Thank you for sticking around, for watching. Here we go. I'm going to play Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup. If you are not familiar with this game, it is a completely free-to-play dungeon crawler that's been in development for, I think, 20-some years, uh, changing hands, and it's a, it's a great game. It's one of the hardest games um, I've ever played, but it's also one of the most rewarding. If you're looking to get into this game, check out my YouTube channel, and you can go through the series I've been building, you can see me make this character from the very beginning and get him all the way to this point. I'm just going to kind of continue with this tutorial explaining my thought process as I move through the game. Hopefully you find it interesting. If you do, uh, subscribe to the YouTube, follow me on Twitch, and otherwise, here we go, getting into the game. If the music's too loud, please let me know. All right, so we're back into Dungeon Crawl with Buns the Bludgeoner. And um, we just cleared out this volcano. And so we're going to go out of the volcano back into the lair, which is our next dungeon branch. Um, do I do ziggurats as melee? If so, how? Yes, if I'm really, really strong. But generally, um, I avoid ziggurats. I, uh, I don't usually try to scum them beyond, like, I'll go in up into maybe the teens and then get out. That's usually my policy, unless I have some character that is um, godlike. Okay, so I'm just going to auto explore, pushing O to move around the lair. I'm fighting a spiny frog. He's bringing the crocodile buddy with him, so I'm going to try to find myself some cover. Here it is in this little corridor, so I can fight guys one at a time, like I like to always do. Um, and here's the crocodile. We're going to give him a hit, and he blows up. He's dead. Now, I was thinking about this character and looking at my skills by pushing the M key to bring up the skills window. And I think I'm going to turn on fighting. Um, and yeah, that's it for now. I did verify that Trog, um, in terms of my ability to use his god gifts, if I push A, I can see that, um, Brother in Arms has an 11% failure rate. It used to have like a 42%. Oh, oh, okay, um... Yeah, this is a good question, Muppet. So the entire game is procedurally generated. However, there are known dungeon branches that will spawn every time. So like, for example, you're going to get a main dungeon that has levels 1 through 15. That's just the first tier of the dungeon. And then you have the next part of the dungeon, which is called the depths. That you'll, you'll just always have that. And then there's different branches that can spawn. And they're either ors. Like you might get either... Um, and I'm not matching them up correctly, the, the snake pits or the swamp or something like that. Um, and so you'll see the same branches, but their layouts are different. The amount of levels in each branch of uh, is fixed, but the layouts are all procedural. The uh, So there's very, very little carryover, except you'll know like what kinds of monsters will inhabit. The particular parts of the dungeon most of the time. All right. And let me see. Um, there's really good information on the dungeon crawl wiki about what you can expect. So what I recommend to people is whenever they get to a branch of the dungeon, like say for example, I'm in the lair. Um, if I've never been... Oh, yeah, 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 cool. Yeah, no, this game is great. And I mean, you know, NetHack is also a good one. There's plenty of other um, crawlers that are good, but this one is, uh, I don't know why, it's just really, really resonated with me. I, I really enjoy it. 
Um, but yeah, it's like a, the replayability is so high because it's different every time. You know, there is some consistency, but allowing you to actually learn, uh, you know, the, the ins and outs, the traits of each branch. Oh, I got put to sleep. I'm sleeping. I got put to sleep and I'm slow. All right, I'm not going to want that to happen again. So, uh, yeah, crawl is great. It's tremendous. All right, this guy put me to sleep. And so I'm going to use, um, oops, I pushed caps lock. I'm going to push A, bring up my abilities here. And I'm going to use Trog's hand, um, this one. And the reason I'm going to do that is because it gives you um, magic resistance. And that should help me against the sleep. It might not. I might be just completely wrong about that. But um, the dream sheep is still making me sleepy. Hey, Fading, do you know, it does, like, is it in most games where if you get hit while you're sleeping, it has a chance to just wake you up? Or is it like, I'm comatose sleeping and the enemies can just wail on me and I'm not going to wake up? It seemed like I woke up. All right, so frog, frog, frog. Yeah, you were right. I had forgotten how the the first few layers of levels of the layer are really, really easy. Okay, it's only if you're petrified. All right, cool. Or like paralyzed or something. Aw, oh, look at that. That's kind of bad luck. I found another amulet of regeneration. I just bought one of these in the shop, spent like 480 gold on it. But anyway, I'm going to check my, actually, speaking of that. See if I can, see if I'm regenerating, if there's any indication here. Yeah, okay, this is cool. Did they just do this in a, in a recent version? I haven't noticed this, but um, they're telling me that I'm regenerating at 0.66 hit points per turn. And I'm assuming that's factoring in my necklace. I'd take it off to do a comparison, but I don't want to because it, it needs to build up a connection with me. I'm rather mundane. Uh, let's see. My attack speed's quite fast. Actually, here, check this out. Um... If you look at the text here, I was just, uh, if you push shift, uh, ampersand, I'm sorry, not shift ampersand, uh, shift at sign, you will get, uh, this little description here, which tells you, like, um, that my attack speed's fast, and I can't improve it with additional weapon skill, so my weapon skill is to the point where I can't make my weapon faster, but it's slowed by my poor shield skill. Um, so that could kind of like govern how I con continue with my skills, but still, nah, because even though my weapon skill doesn't affect, um, my, my attack speed anymore, it still affects accuracy and damage with the weapon, so it's still, I'm just gonna take it to 27, I'll do that all, all the time. Ooh, here's the spider place, it looks like. We got some spider webs all over the ground here in the lair. And this is either a bunch of spiders or the entrance to the uh, spider pits or lair or whatever it's called. Now, um, let me just kind of take your attention to this part of the screen here. Um, so, this is a very, very good place to yeah, the spider nest, you're right. Get defense, this is superior. Um, but the way that I'm positioned, I can't get to this easily. So I'm going to back up. And this will help me just fight one spider at a time for a second. Now another could very well come over here. But by that time, I will have gotten... Yeah, they're going to do that. I'm going to get plenty of licks in. Against these guys. Now they poisoned me, which is a bummer. And that's why I took a bunch of damage there. I was just holding down the tab key, which is the auto attack key, um, to kind of blow through those dudes, but they were doing enough poison to ruin me. 
All right, I'm gonna eat some crocodile flesh. Sounds good. So I picked up a scroll that I don't know what it is. I have four scrolls of identify now, so let's go ahead and start identifying some potions. Two potions of brilliance. That's not brilliant. Um, I don't want that at all. That, those temporarily raise your intelligence. That's nearly useless for me. I'm going to use a another scroll here. I'll use this. It's a scroll of acquirement. Dun, 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 All right, so um, I just happened to be really lucky and pick up a scroll of acquirement. And so here's how this works. Let me show you the uh, text box when this happens. So when you get a scroll of acquirement, it opens up this window, which asks you, like, basically, what do you want? Like, what are you interested in? Do you want a weapon? Do you want armor? Do you want jewelry? Um, do you want a book? No, I don't. Do you want... A staff? Nope. Do you want an evocable item, like a magical item that you can evoke to do something? Nope. Do you need food? Nah, I'm good on food. I'm good on gold, pretty much. So, for me, the choice is either between weapon, armor, uh, or jewelry. Those are the ones that I'm looking at. And it's actually a tough call. I think I'm gonna... I usually go jewelry, personally, um, because getting artifact rings is just so powerful. And... I'm pushed to that point because in my armor situation, I can't get better chest armor. I have dragon scales. I can't get better um, gloves unless I get artifact or helmet unless I get artifact. So I'm going to go jewelry. What do you guys think? Anybody have an opinion on what I should do? I could use an artifact, cloak, boots, hat, or glove. I mean, that's 100% that's true. And I could use a large shield. But my rings are really bad. I mean, look what I have. I have just very generic rings. Um, really? Hmm. Um, all right, then. All right, then. Um, interesting. Interesting call. I think the fact that I don't have any boots is pretty reasonable. All right, let's see what we get. We're gonna go armor. All right, I'll tell you what. I'm gonna go with my gut. Like I was almost persuaded by fading there to go with armor, but I'm gonna just do what I would normally do just because this is an educational run through and I usually go jewelry in a spot like this, but this might be a mistake. We'll see, what do I get? Um, jewelry. Something appears at my feet. Hmm, this doesn't look good. Protection from cold. Oh, I ruined myself. I got something really bad. So, not horrible. Not without use. And it does identify that ring for me, but not an artifact. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Just unlucky. Just an unlucky roll. But we did get a scroll of acquirement. And... We identified it. Oh, that's right. That's true. I could have saved it. Well, it was one of those things where um, I didn't know what it was before I read it. So I did a blind read, which, you know, there's a lot of thought process behind that. I actually do blind reads of scrolls all the time, but some people might want to save them. But now I'll know if I get scroll of requirement, I could save it. Okay. Um, I'm going to go down in the layer. I've mapped the first or the second layer level here. Um, I'm going to eat before I go down here, just in case. I'm not going into the spider's nest. You blind read all scrolls. Yeah, I, I generally do that myself. I don't like to waste identify scrolls on scrolls. Um, the spider's nest is something I'm going to save for much later. It's a pain. They can hit really hard. They can poison you. They're really fast. This is easier, so I'm going to do this. I'm going to bring up this hydra and this yak. No, just this hydra. That's fine. How many heads you got, Hydra? Fives? Okay. I'm just going to start swinging at this guy. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to need to go berserk against him. I didn't. And I'll rest. And I'll go back down and st stare dance these guys and just tab and clean them out. Chop up their flesh. Not his flesh, his flesh. Yak flesh is delicious. Um, yeah, that's a good question, Muppet. There are bad scrolls. Uh, so what I usually do when I... 
Right, right, yeah, blank you don't want to waste. There are bad scrolls, uh, so usually what I do with scrolls is I read them on a level that I've completely explored, so I can't ruin myself. Um, there's like a scroll of immolation or a scroll of torment that can do bad things to you, but for the most part, unless you're around a bunch of monsters, it's okay to do it. It's much, much worse to drink potions that you haven't identified yet, in my opinion. All right, come to Papa. Buns is breaking them down. How's my fighting skill going? All right. Uh, Fading saying he reads everything on the s the steps uh, from D four to D three. Yeah. Yeah, that's a that's an interesting strategy. Got another ring. Maybe this one's good. All right, so I'm not going to actually use an identify scroll on this. I'm going to just put it on because I have 12 remove curse scrolls. Uh, I'm going to take off this ring and throw this on. Eh, it's a plus two ring of strength. That's great. It's you can a plus five um, ring of strength would be better, but for the most part. This is still better than what I had. Now, what I'm going to do is um, keep the ring of sea invisible on. I don't need two rings of two levels of fire resistance at the moment, so I'd like to just be versatile as much as I can. Woo! Look at this nightmare. All right, these are complete jerk guys called um, Aklob plants. Okay, and. If you step into their range, they start firing at you, and they're really, really hard to kill, and they are they love killing you. And anything in these red X's here is like, I can kill you. I can shoot at you. Um, but luckily, I can step right back here, and then I'm out of their range. Now, this guy, this um, enemy called a, a Kato Blebus or whatever, is a real bastard of an enemy because he can blow this like cloud of steam that turns you into stone. Now, here's a question. Does my scarf protect me from petrifying cloud? Yeah, yeah, I was wondering, I thought so. Okay, so that scarf that I got that I was dogging because it's cloud immunity, I've actually lost um, runs to getting turned into stone by that guy. And, and runs where I was really good. All right, so let me just zoom in here, show you my uh, positioning. I just kind of ducked into this. This man may well jump over here, but he, they don't look like they're going to right now. They'll just satisfy fighting me in that little uh, adjacent corridor, and that's great. The lair is generally a very wide open dungeon, and so you are not probably going to find perfect alcoves for yourself here, uh, but that's okay. What is this, like, tuning fork thing? It's a lightning rod. It allows its wielder to fire unavoidable blasts of lightning. Oh, these are cool. This is good. I mean, I'm... I'm leveling up my evocation, so I might as well just have this item. Yeah, sure, I'll pick this up. Now, um... So what you can do is, like, if you get an item like this that you can evoke and it has four charges, I can right-click on it and then press V to evoke it, which means I try to use it, and it's based on my evocation skill, which I've been luckily leveling up a bit. I got an extra hit point. I was at 100. Now I'm at 101 because my fighting is slowly trickling up, and that just gives you hit points, and that's pretty important at this point to just level up my uh, HP pool. I wonder if... Um, I can blast these Aklob plants from afar with my lightning rod um, and try to get that necklace. Like, is that worth it? There really isn't any, there's an unidentified potion that might be worth it. But is there anything that's worth it? What I can do is um, 
I can use my wand of digging to like blast this square out and then step here and fire in the acid resist ring. Yeah, yeah, let's put that on. Let's take this the invisible off and put this on. So I'm gonna use the digging wand here that I have that has nine charges and I'm gonna hit this square. No, I don't like how that's doing it. I'm gonna hit this square right here. Okay, so what this wand of digging does is it blasts through the walls, all right? And it opens up a passageway, and now I can move here. Now, they're gonna ask me if I want to move here because it's what they call, let me show you. Um, let me zoom in on the text box here. It's what they call a travel excluded area, which means like you could die if you step here, you're going to do something bad to yourself. But I know that I'm doing this and I'm going to try and do it. Um, yeah, I could just walk in and try to just grab the necklace. Let's see what happens. Um, I'm gonna... All right, so they spit acid at me. They already did 10 damage to me. I resisted the corrosion from the acid because of my ring of corrosion. You see here that I have um, one out of one levels on resist corrosion. All right, um, so that's helping me tremendously in this spot. Now... I think they can actually all hit me, which stinks. I could use a scroll of fog. And then just walk in and take it, maybe? Let's see what happens if I do that. Boop, let's go. Okay, backfire. I hit that guy really, really hard, but... Um, he survived. I was just trying to melee him while I had my fog going. Um, I really never mess with these Aklobs, so I don't know how tough they are. But let's let's try this again. And then this time, I'm going to just see what this does if I evoke this and try to hit this guy. Um, he got severely damaged. Let's do it again. He's dead. Let's do it again. And now... I can hit um, all three of these guys, and let's do it one more time before all the charges are used up. Okay, and then I'm going to regenerate, and I'm going to... Oh, I see. Yeah, you're right. Um, Fading is bringing up a really good point that I could have been a little bit more strategic with my necklace uh, or my wand of digging for the purpose of just walking in to get that necklace but i kind of wanted to go in and see if i could fire my item at these guys and just kill them and i'm gonna just kind of try to blast this guy and uh, they don't seem to care about that all right i'm gonna i'm gonna go berserk and see if i can just kill these guys with melee there we go got him okay so that was pretty easy um let's see if we got anything good what is this necklace I'm actually going to ID it. I don't want to take off my regen necklace. Oh, actually, I'm going to do it just for this, the sake of argument here. Or, I'm sorry, for experimentation. So if I take this off, let me look at myself. Uh, my resist goes down to 0.26 per turn, where it was 0.66, so that's how much I was getting. Um, Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, the Amulet of Faith is bad. All right, well, let's just see what it is. It's an uncursed Amulet of Harm. Yeah. I've never been able to make these things work. Um, it, you'd think that it would be really good. It, what this arm, an Amulet of Harm does is it, it, like, makes you do more damage but take more damage. And trust me, in this game, you never want to switch, like, at least for me, I don't like trading defense for offense most of the time making yourself more vulnerable where you could just have a situation where you get one shot or a situation gets out of control because you take too much and it's just never worth it it's never worth it i don't like this necklace i'm dropping it on the ground and i'm putting my necklace back on okay so it immediately once i put it back on it immediately goes back up to 0.66 per turn so i was curious because it says right here um it must first attune itself to the wearer's full body uh the wearer's body at full health oh i get it so maybe it just means that as soon as you're at full health it, it, it turns on 
and it prevents you from like hacking the game by being lower in health and then just putting this on when you need it and starting to regenerate it won't work for you unless you already are at full so you can't use it like in battle as a heal i think is is the thought process there anyway whatever we killed some aklob plants right Now, again, I'm very strong at this point, and I just happen to have the right items to deal with that. But I generally would just say, don't fight Aklobs. Not worth it. Okay, let me talk about these guys here. These are called Blink Frogs. Now, frogs are usually a joke. Um, I mean, they can hit hard early, but after a while, they're a joke. These guys can surprise you with their um, ability to do damage and survive. So I'm going to just start mowing through them. Now, I'm good. I beat them. But they can be really annoying for melee because they blink. And so they can go in and out of your range and delay a fight and cause another enemy to come in and just wreak all kinds of havoc. So I don't like blink frogs very much. I Okay, here's my dude. Um... Am I happy with my ring situation versus this guy? Sure. Let's just start throwing some stuff at this guy. Oh, okay. So, he's he's made his little thing here. What you want to... He's blown his little cloud, like, out of his nose uh, that was going to try to turn me into stone. What you want to do in this spot is step out of this, step out of this as soon as possible because if you stand in that cloud you will petrify, and that is not what you want. I'm just going to go berserk because screw this guy. Um, all right, there we go. He's dead. And let's just wait, wait, wait. Clear off the, the sleepiness. Clear off the um, anti-berserk debuff and move on with our lives. Okay, so that's layer three cleared. Um, I'm looking at my inventory... This wand of polymorph, that could actually be useful. Sometimes I've saved my ass in situations with that. It can make it worse, but it can also really, really help you out. Do I have anything that I'm excited about that I want to use? Not really. Um, I'm dropping these arrows. I don't know why the hell I have those, but I don't want them. Maybe Trog gave them to me. Whatever. Don't need them. Okay. Okay. A wave of frost passes over me. Oh, okay. So the frost ring that I got is actually going to come in handy. Oh, and it's right by the staircase. Okay, cool. This place could be a... I've actually died in this place before. Um, ooh, I reached level 16. Ooh, and I got strength as my random stat. Great. That is a terrific development. All right. Got seven hit points for that level. Here, get out of here. Um. Yeah, I've died everywhere too. I mean, that's the game. This game... You will die everywhere. But the point is, um, it's close by the entrance hall, and I'm going to de-equip my um, acid ring and put on my cold ring, and now I should have two cold resistance, so I feel okay going in here. It's just filled with icy beasts, which are not good. I'm going to pop um, Brothers in Arms right here. Oh, I failed to use my ability. What a bummer. Okay. I failed to use it again? All right, anyway, whatever. Kill all these guys. Whoa, yes, look at this. Scroll of Enchant Armor, delicious. Scroll of Enchant Weapon, awesome. What a good outcome so far here. Um, there's also an unID'd potion, so that's good. Oh, ugly thing. You so ugly. Okay, get out. Okay. So... Can I just go out the way I came? Is there any reason to go through that? Is there like some kind of treasure thing? Ooh, actually, is my st uh, is my thing gonna help me here? My scarf? Yeah, cloud immunity. All right. I'm just gonna swing at this. Oh, they summon guys too? All right. I'm gonna go out. I'm just gonna let these dudes, I'll fight them, whatever, get them out. Um, okay, let's go back in. Yeah, direct nukes and summons. Alright, so I'll take them out one at a time.
Now, my, my double resist cold is just embarrassing these guys. All right, look at this. Another enchant armor and an identify scroll. A lantern, we're going to get this. Um, a lamp of fire is great for evoking. This is something I've actually found with this build. Whenever I go trog, um, I have to put so much into evoke so my wands are good because I need the utility that these kinds of items, like a lamp of fire, um, which unleashes trails of searing flame around the target, this can be really, really good. Lifesaver, even. What's this plate? It's magical plate. That's cool. Um, okay, so let's watch the games begin. I am no longer going to enchant my shield with my enchant armor scrolls, even though it would help make it better. Because at this point, I want a large shield. I do not want to use this medium shield. So I'm going to start pouring enchant armor into this gold dragon scales. Because, look, it can be enchanted to plus 12. And I'm never going to get better armor in this game. I mean, if I get better armor this run, it's going to be insane. So... I know that it's a good investment to just put these in here. Let's look at my armor class. It's 26, getting better. I'm going to use this, and I'm going to use it on my armor. Armor, great. Now, it's a little bit trickier to think about uh, what I want to do. Um, with my enchant weapon scroll... Do I want to use it on this anti-magic evening star, which I'm not married to? Or do I want to save it in case Trog gives me something else? I'm not actually going to save it. Um, unless Trog gives me something else that I want to enchant more. This is pretty good. If I can rebrand this in some capacity, maybe. Yeah, exactly. Here's the other question. Did they take... They, I think that they took out scrolls from being destroyed... It, um, a while ago, right? It, it used to be that, like, if you caught on fire or certain enemies could, like, destroy your scrolls or your potions and stuff. And it, So, carrying around a scroll of enchant weapon could actually be a bad plan. But I think they took that out, so I'm, I'm safe carrying it around. I think. Yeah, that's what I thought. So they can't destroy your consumables anymore. That's terrific. I'm going to go ahead and identify this stack of three potions. Ugh, I was really hoping these were heal wounds. Man, I am so deep into the game to not know heal wound potions. I mean, it's kind of actually a pretty amazing achievement that I've gotten this far without being able to use a heal wounds potions as a melee person. Anyway, um, it's it's been going pretty well. Uh, so I'm going to drop these liquefaction. I don't need to turn into a tree ever. I don't want to turn into a tree ever. I'm out. Okay. Let's start exploring. Hey, another enchant armor. They're really helping me out. What, you want me to have those trees? What's tree good for? Explain to me liquefaction. I've never found a use for that. Educate. I mean, is there a use? Oh, another one of these guys. But you can't move, and you can't swing your weapon, right? Don't you just root to the ground as a tree, or... Oh, okay, cool. Well, then I'll save them from here on out. Mummy Torment, I'm luckily far away from. Um, but yeah, okay, cool. Well, that's great to know. Um, it does meld. It, the, the thing I hate about liquefaction, and again, I don't have a super amount of experience using it, but I think it makes it so you can't use your shield anymore. And I rely so heavily on my shield that I don't care for it, but... Get out of here, petrify man. Hey, another identify scroll. This is great. This is great. We're doing really, really, really good. Um, I will... Ooh, I've got four. Okay, let's do it. Potions of might. Excellent. Potions of heal wounds. Finally. We found them. Look at that. Almost all potions identified, too. 
That's terrific. All right, let's just drop this potion of magic. That's garbage for me. Uh, potions of Berserk Rage are garbage to me. How do I... Um, uh, there's a way that I can mark these as I don't ever want to see them again, but I don't care. It's not that big of a deal. Um, okay. Let's think. Anything else I want to do here? I don't want these potions of agility. I'm not going to use that. Okay. Let's identify the last potion. Cancellation. There you go. All right. Um, let's keep exploring then. Hey, I'm hungry. And there's some yaks. I bet they didn't know that I was going to be eating them. Thank you, yak. I'm eating yak today. How's my training doing? Pretty good. Pretty damn good. I'm just going to keep it at this um, breath. To be perfectly honest, normally um, I might be a little bit less inclined to leave a spread of skills training like this. But because I'm a human, I might as well take advantage of the fact that I have no aptitude minuses. Um, except for somehow spellcasting. Um, but this is good. So because they're all the same, yeah, let's just level it. Let's just use our um, versatility to our advantage. Okay, okay. Things are going really well. Komodo man. Komodo dragon can be a pain. He used to disease you, but they took disease out, I think. So, meh, not really worried. I think he just hits hard now. Let's see what he's all about. I'm going to step into this little chamber. Oh, he did hit me pretty hard there. 15. That's pretty good. Hey, my maces and flail skills. All right. One thing, you know, that might not be obvious to new players, um, and it certainly wasn't obvious to me right away, hitting, like, a milestone of level 17 with maces and flails, it's not necessarily, like, ticking up to 17 is what's necessary to give me a benefit. 16.9 could just as easily give the same benefit. You see that the skills level up with a decimal, and they incrementally move up in tenths and so you can get a kind of like I could get an extra hit point from fighting at 5.3 it doesn't have to go to 6 so don't necessarily get hung up on whole numbers with skills now there are certain things that you do want like 27 is the maximum that you can get a skill trained to uh, or at least it used to be and you want to get uh, it'll tell you, like, you want to get your weapon skill to this level to get its maximum speed or whatever. Oh, okay, so sickness is still in, but not disease. Okay. All right, let's do it. Let's just push O and fly around. I love this part of the game, just flying around. Ba-ba-doo. And we're done exploring. All right, we're doing really well in the lair here, knock on wood. All right, let's go down the steps. Let's see what we see. Porcupine man. Frog man. Dead man. All right, a lot of enemies there. So I'm gonna back up to my stairwell. I'm just gonna start swinging. Oh, I forgot to, before the game, adjust my um, config file to change when I stop auto fighting. I'm going to do that next time and I'm going to screen capture myself. I'm going to record myself doing it so if anybody else wants to do the same thing, they know how to do it. It's really not that tricky, but um, I asked at the uh, Discord the, the uh, Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup um, Discord if you could do it in game, if they had changed it and you still can't do it in game. Anyway, here's Snorg. This guy can be a bastard. Um because uh, what does he do he can go berserk 
Oh, I thought you had something else beside that. All right, well, that's still a pain. I mean, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna give him some stuff. I'm gonna give him the business and see how he feels about this. I'm just gonna blast him with my wand of disintegration. Until he gets on me. And I'm gonna step back. He moves at the same speed. Oh, he went berserk. Okay, this is actually pretty good. I'm gonna go berserk too then. I got him to waste a few turns of his berserk. It didn't matter because I'm I'm better at going berserk than he is. I'm crazier than he is. Um, when I rip off my shirt and expose my muscled torso, it's more muscled than his. Actually, probably not. His strength is probably higher. I just have a better weapon and... and Better gear, better armor, and a shield. He's just going bare hands or whatever. Alrighty. Hello. Polar bear. Let me just take a moment to uh, iterate that I love the mental image I get when I think about my character fighting a polar bear. I don't know what it is about that. Yeah, no, Snork has killed me too. He can be sneaky. Any any enemy in this game that can go berserk like a troll or whatever is something you want to watch out for. Because as you've seen me do this entire playthrough, berserk is pretty much the skill I rely on the most heavily. And it's a complete game changer. So, watch out. If you can see somebody go Berserk, you can start trying to run away from them, but Berserk speeds you up also, uh, so there's a good chance you won't outrun them. But if you can, like, haste or blink and then wait until they lose their Berserk, then you can just rip them apart. Okay, Ring of Intelligence. Actually, I'm just going to drop both of these. I don't ever want them. Maybe if I have to come back, you know, but for now, I'm not. Actually, though, I will say I'm level what? Um, 16 at level 18 when I get to pick I'm gonna raise my intelligence. I hate to do that um, but I Do want to be immune to insta kills or just very bad situations. Ooh, another a club. Do I feel? Lucky do I feel like fighting this guy? Let's see what the opportunities for engagement are around the other sides. Are there more than one of these dudes? Is it just one? Mm, there's a cool spiked helmet in there. Do I want that? Not really. My helmet is good. If it was an artifact, I'd be interested. But he's also standing on top of the staircase to the slime pits, which I will eventually have to get into. Yep, gotta get there. So, I gotta beat that guy in a second. I'll beat him in a moment. Let me just clear out the rest of the, the uh, floor here. The last thing I want is some enemy to come in that I didn't discover and make this harder than it needs to be. All right, so I'm going to change my ring situation from cold to resist acid. Step in here. I'm going to turn on my regeneration and step into the travel excluded area. And I'm just going to walk right over to this guy and say hello. When there's only one of them, it's much easier. That last one... I think I had five in it. Anyway, he's gone. My advice will continue um, to be for beginners. And so I will emphasize that like as a beginner, it's completely worthwhile to get a bunch of three rune victories under your belt. Hell, as a beginner, it's worthwhile just to try to get to experience level 10. Experience level 5, honestly. This game is so hard. I remember how many times I died, you know, just trying to get to the ecumenical temple for my first time when I began playing all those years ago. So, don't you don't have to follow along completely with me because um, at this point in my crawl career, I'm always trying to get all the runes unless it just seems uh, completely impossible with the gear that I've gotten. So I'm going to go in all the branches, most likely, providing I don't die first, which there's a very high chance that I will. But you don't have to. I'm going to tell you which dungeons are the easiest ones, like which branches I recommend the most to try to get the 
um, runes out of, and this Iron Pits is not one of them. Okay, so let's go down in further into the lair and see what we got. We got a Potion of Haste, which is great. I'm going to Stair Dance this uh, Basilisk up. And I'm going to wait, and then I'm going to go down to and greet this Hydra and bring him up. He has six heads. That's annoying. Um, I'm going to go Berserk just because there's no one around, and why not? Um, I'm near starving, so I'm going to eat one of my rations. I'm going to wait until I'm no longer uh, prevented from going Berserk because of the debuff. And I'm going to kill these guys and chop them up. All right, and then let's just six-headed Hydra. Sure. Nope, elephant. These elephants are sweet. Love them. Love them. Um, yeah, slime is rough. Slime is like one of the last places you go. At least the one of the last places I go. I'll give you an indication of how bad it is. Slime is so bad that the walls actively hurt you if you touch them. Because they're like dripping with slimy acid. That should help illustrate how nightmarish that is. Now, let me explain something about elephants, okay? Um... Elephants can do this thing where they, like, charge you and knock you backward. No matter how strong you are or what kind of shield you have, they can still successfully do that sometimes. And you have to plan for that because that can completely screw you. And the example I want to give is right here. Um, if I'm standing on this staircase and my plan is to run away up the steps if things go south, this elephant can knock me away from it and then... A mob could step on top of the staircase, and then I don't have an escape route anymore. So you have to be very, very careful with elephants because of their ability to, to move you around. And if I've said it once, I've said it a million times, when you're melee, and even if you're a caster, positioning is everything in this game. It's so important. So I'm going to wait, 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 and I'm just going to carry this guy up the steps with me, um, and I'm going to bring these guys both up the steps with me. I'm going to kill the um, Black Mamba first because I don't want him doing anything silly to me, like poisoning me, and he's easier to kill. You always want to kill, generally, the, the easier target unless it's so easy that it's inconsequential because you want to have less things hitting you. Here's a five-headed Hydra. Hello. Okay. Okay. There we go. There we go. We're just mowing people down. Okay. This guy's gonna... These guys are gonna try to put me to sleep. So, because of that... Um, I'm drowsy. I'm asleep. Alright. I'm gonna fight him here. Okay, so let's see what happens. I'm sleeping. He missed me. And then he hit me and I immediately woke up. So, um... Sleep seems to be canceled on taking damage which is makes it not too bad for me but I could be in a situation where like ooh look here's an artifacts like uh, hand axe kind of an unfortunate situation hand axe is a really crappy weapon in terms of its base damage so getting an artifact brand on it is just too bad I'm not even going to identify it because there's no way in hell I would switch to it Uh, this guy back here is uh, using summoning stuff on me. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use this like that. And then I'm going to um, do this. And then I'm going to use this like that. And it's the Boggart who's doing this, right? So I'm going to use this like that. Um, and then I'm going to use it finally like this. Yeah, and we got most of the guys there. I'm going to go Berserk myself. Um, oh, the Boggart's still there. I'm going to go Berserk and just kill this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy. Uh, where did you go?
with my wand of uh, acid. So that's good, except I'm teleporting. Okay, this is a fine spot to teleport to. So my buddy came with me. I'm going to wait, have my um, troll just kill these guys, because he will. Ah, look at this disaster. Trog gave me a glowing hand crossbow. He He's predisposed to give you things that you're trained in, but he can still roll something terrible like this for you, which is a disaster. Anyway, whatever. We survived. I had to waste a teleport scroll, unfortunately, but that was my own fault for getting overconfident uh, and just trying to... Ooh, this is a cool item. Um, it's a... Buckler of Reflection? I would love to get a large shield of reflection. Anybody? Oh, I could use it with a shield, so there's maybe some... Yeah, I'll, I'll... I mean, if I develop some... a desire to go range, I'll just come back. Man, they made Spriggans a lot harder than they used to be. At least as far as I remember. Alright, so here's a ring. Some plate armor... And some gold. And an encrusted dagger. Another waste of an artifact. Actually, if I look at my paper doll... I don't want to complain because I've got gold skill armor. But I actually haven't acquired an artifact at all. That, I'm, that I've wanted to use this entire game. I think I got a set of ring mail early on that I was considering. Um, but that was even a compromise. So I really... I'm due for some artifacts, people. Alright, let's check out this ring situation. What you got for me? A ring of wizardry. Wow, that couldn't be dropped faster. Okay. Um, let's keep exploring. Alright, that was a tab situation. These guys are just like most of these dudes around these, this little enchanted forest area here. It's the forbidden forest from Hogwarts. Um... Because they're primarily beasts, I can just devastate these dudes. So they're here they come. I'm gonna put stand here and just mow them down. Okay, Boggart again. Alright, so that Boggart means I have to stop doing my thing and run away until his summons wear off. He's really good at summoning things. These hydras are staying around forever. I would use something to blast him, but I don't want, um... I don't want to get hit by a stupid summon thing. I'm just going to go up the steps and wait until all of his summons are gone. And explore. The Boggart is nearby. There he is. Hi, buddy. I'm going to blast you with this. Oh, I can't. That's too bad. Okay. Can I get you now? Or is that statue still in my way? That snail statue is the bane of my existence. He turned invisible. Okay. Take this off and put this back on. And then there you are. And, I, and if I can hit you, you're dead. Okay, great. Wand of paralysis. No, thanks. That's too weak for me. Not saying it's entirely useless. I'm just saying I have better options. Haha. <laughs> No, I got wands for that, man. I got wands. I don't need to take off my weapon. And I actually have a good skill with the wand. Hand crossbow. Nah, dude. There's enough wands for me in this game. The wolf is too close. But I'm telling you, I might come back and pick that up. But for now, that's usually not my bag. See, watch this. This guy... Acid. Oh, you're out of range. What about, are you out of range of uh, this one? Nope. Boom. Blew him up. Disintegrated him. No disintegration. Except against Boggarts. Actually, against everybody, you know. I don't think there are rules in this place. Okay. Mm how am I doing? How am I doing? Doing great. I'm hungry. What, there's no more layer? That's it? Just goes down to the layer six? 
Okay, so I guess I, that's the bottom of the layer. So I uncovered some more dungeon branches, I suppose. Um, and maybe there was a treasure trove. If there was... Yeah. All right. Looking at my inventory, seeing how I'm doing. Okay, well, let's just push Shift G then and take a look at all of our options of like where the hell we want to go. Now, of these options, I know one place I want to go. I'm going to go to the Orcish Mines. Now, you might say, but you already cleared the Orcish Mines. I sort of did. I'm near starving. Well, I'm going to have to eat one of my delicious rations. But I didn't clear the um, alternative first floor locations, and so I'm going to do that, see if there's anything worthwhile. All right, so let's see the staircases that I could go up, like this one. And, okay, there's Josephine Baker. Let's go down. Start blowing these guys away. Hey, guys, how you doing? We're going down. Man, boomerangs were flying. All right, I'm going to um, use Trog's hand. And I'm going to go up. And what'd she do? She tried to blast me. Okay, there's some wraiths here. I'm going to go down. Go back up. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. I'm going to bring Josephine with me. I'm just going to go berserk. I know she's really not that dangerous, but I want to clear out all these guys. Hey, Trog finally gave me something good. Artifact. Unfortunately, son of a bee, it's a dire flail, which means it's a two-handed weapon, which I won't use. Um, I refuse. There's a whole thread. If you're interested in my feelings about two-handed weapons, why don't you check out the Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup Reddit, and you can see... How badly I hate two-handed weapons. Now, I will inspect this, but some people claim that two-handed weapons are good and extended because the enemies that you get way later in the game get around shields. I still don't buy into that, but I think it's worth a gander at this weapon. Uh, I can't wheel that with a shield. Right, right. What is this? Okay. This is almost tempting. The plus 11 dire flail of brutal revenge. It crushes, gives you resist negative energy, it takes away fire, gives you plus four decks and some stealth. Um, however, I wanna say this about this item. It's base damage is 13, okay? So even though it's a dire flail, which looks like it would be really badass, let me show you something. Um, this Evening Star is higher base damage and it's one-handed. So, I'm never going to use a Dire Flail. Even a plus 11 Dire Flail. You might think I'm crazy. I'm not. Do I want zero shield skill? No, I don't. I want 17 shield skill. So, that's too bad. Beautiful attempt, Trog. Thank you so much for that, but I'm going to put it down. All right. Well, let's see. There's a troll, so I need to just be a little bit wary with him. I think I should just be able to chop through these guys like they're nothing for the rest of the time. Remember, this is Orc 1. Oh, there's Okawaru. I'm sure Trog wouldn't mind if I switched gods. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. He made it so I can't move. What a jerk. Stop doing all that. Okay. Okay. Going down. Is there a two-handed strength mod benefit? There very well may be. I'm not sure the exact uh, arithmetic there. But the bottom line is, philosophically, what people say is that a two-hander is good because you can kill the enemy faster and so it gives it less opportunity to use painful abilities on you, like Torment, Hellfire, or just hit you. And that makes sense logically, but in practice, I've never seen it work out. I've always wanted a shield. 
I've ne there's never been a situation. Right. That's what people say. Now, that's the argument people make is that like, oh, no, it's good because you can DPS them so fast that they can't hurt you. It just that is a strategy that doesn't win for me. But if other people like it. Yeah, exactly. I know. I know. That's what I mean. And so you have people from the back casting spells or shooting arrows at you that you can just block with the shield. And you need to block. So, yeah, I don't I don't quite get that argument. Um, maybe if it was like a one-on-one -on -one scenario where you were fighting one of those like named jerks in, you know, uh, one of the extended branches, one of those guys that take up two tiles or something. But yeah, the pan lords, that's what I'm thinking of. But other than that, nah, no thanks. All right, let's see if there's another way up. There isn't. Okay, so we've now explored this. So let's go to... Um, I'm going to go to the uh, Elven Halls here in this case. I'm just going to do the first floor of the Elven Halls anyway. Sometimes this is a really, really difficult time in the game for a lot of people, including myself choosing where to go the easy answer is just go where there, you can handle yourself um but knowing where that is and what can kill you in each branch just takes a lot of experience and information hopefully watching these run-throughs of mine will help you understand what lies in wait um but here i go i'm going into the elven halls the elven halls are tough because elves can use magic shoot arrows oh crap i've lost to this lady before um i'm gonna take a pig with me i guess this lady's the worst i'm gonna turn on magic res resistance um i'm gonna go back down and i'm gonna berserk and i'm gonna take her down um all of those hogs were people so i kind of feel bad for it's kind of like yeah, exactly. It's kind of like Spirited Away. She could turn you into that pig, though, which is kind of a game ender. I've lost to her. It's really sad when that happens, but I'm going to wait. Wait. And we did it. We got her. And we freed a bunch of people. We fe we freed... Uh, yeah, Spirited Away um, or Willow. Yeah, it's like uh, Chihiro's parents have been freed. Or... Um, what is her name? Bavmorda? The the evil woman spellcaster in Willow who, you are all pigs, and turns everybody into pigs. Yeah. But there's some dancing weapons. Maybe I can get a cool dancing evening star. I'll take it. The one thing that's kind of nice about the Elven Halls is that it has a lot of corridors at the very least. So you don't necessarily get a swarm, but you can. Elves are good fighters. Oh, that guy blasted me. Yeah, you there these um DPS casters that the elves have um can sometimes just land some massive spells on you that are not anything you want to have. What is this guy? Air elemental? Oh, okay. Hey man, I got this. I got this sweet scarf. This scarf is coming in clutch, dude. I was knocking it. I do have anti-magic. I have that evening star, but I, I don't I don't think it's an upgrade. Yeah, it's only plus two, exactly. And plus, these guys are really, really quick. And so a big, slow weapon that's, that I'm not that accurate with um, is not my jam. Hey, he hit me. All right, I'm going berserk. Hey, come back. This guy's bouncing all over the place. Oh, I'm confused. I'm hungry. Can I eat? All right, I can eat that meat. That's cool. Can I use my ability? Yeah, that's cool. All right, I'm going to try to get down to you. Actually, you know what? No, I'm not. I'm just going to hit you with that. 
And, uh, hey, have you ever been blown up before? Aw, I'll hit you with this then. There you go. Get out of here. Turkey. Alright, let's uh, speed back up. 120 hit points ain't too shabs. Oh, you guys. Just blinking all over the place, being tricksy elves. Uh-oh. Well, this could get worse. Okay. The fire elemental. Well, if there's fire elementals in here, then... Time to take off the... S well, the sea invisible might be helpful against the casters. Do you recall if these um, large abomination looks dangerous? Wow, he each varies in speed and durability by the nature of whatever unfortunates were used to make it. God, that's a terrifying description. All right, um, but luckily he doesn't look like he has any magic. Oh, here's a bunch of guys that do have magic. Yeah. Hey, um, Fady, do you remember how many of the casters in, in the Elven Halls turn themselves invisible? Is that a thing that they do? Or not really? Hello. Alright. So... Yeah, exactly. I mean, and fading strategy here is pretty much spot on, which is you need to kill these fat, these uh, cloth wearing casters as fast as you can. And what you want to do for me, if you're this build type, is take advantage of the long corridors and get line of sight working to your favor. Unfortunately, I don't have any resist negative energy. Um, Oh, that's right, they're gonna try to send me to the Abyss. Yeah, I don't really want that at all right now. I can handle the Abyss, I still don't like it. Um, what do you think about that? Oh, you're out of range? Well then, what do you think about this? Uh, you don't like it. That's what you, don't, what you think. All right, you're dead. See, I got my wands though. Don't forget my wands. Alright. Are you summoning something? Get out of here. Ambrosia. Sweet Ambrosia. Dropping Ambrosia. Dropping magic. Hey! Boy, that's an unfortunate... Um, no, because it confuses you, doesn't it? Don't the Ambrosia Potions confuse you? Oh. Yeah, I guess. No, I just rest. And to be honest, I use Trog's hand. I got Trog's hand, my man, for my regen needs. And let's not forget my necklace. But yeah. Alright. It's Donald! <laughs> Donald the Adventurer. One of the things that I love about this game is that you... All these named people, like, they have a story for why they ended up in Zot's Hall. And... 99% of the people that you encounter, people or monsters that are named that have some kind of backstory, are just going to fight you and try to kill you, even though you probably have the same objective. Yeah, he could... He, I mean, it's a medium shield, but it, it still could be really, really good. Um, so he can might and haste. Ah, get out of here with that. What do you think about acid? Now you're still out of range. Okay, well, what do you think about disintegration? Do you like it? He easily resisted. Look at that guy. Got him. Donald, how do I want to kill you? What's the best thing to do against you? 
not Wand of Flame. Um, I'm just going to throw stuff at you. I'm going to use my regen. I'm going to throw something at you. I'm going to go Berserk and just beat the crap out of you. How's that? It's a plus zero shield. That sucks, dude. You're supposed to have a good one. It does have plate, which is cool. But yeah. Oh, well. Ooh, boots! Boots! Jackpot! <laughs> I'm finally getting some boots for the first time in the game. My feet must have been bloody. All right, I'm going to tell you something. Watch this. I'm going to first rest before I do anything. Okay. Okay. My armor class is 29. If I put on these boots, it goes up to 31, okay? Now, you might be like, why is that? It's because my armor skill. This is base rating 1, but I actually get 2 armor from it because my armor skill is sweet. Man, I've, I've been drained pretty severely. Look at this. Almost a full level from all my skills. That guy. I don't have any resist negative energy, so it's kind of a shame. Do you still get rid of Drain um, by gaining experience, or is it something that just over time? Alright, 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 that hurt, that hurt. What did he blast me with? Bolt of Lightning? Yep, those Lightning Bolts can just roll really, really lucky. Now he's dead. Again, it's all a matter of just getting in a position where they can't use their range against you. I'm going to go ahead and use Trog's hand, wait for this guy, and put him in the ground. All right, so Elven Hall's one, all done. Yeah, they seem to have um, reduced the magnitude of draining. Like, I was drained in the red right there, um, and it still only took me down maybe a skill level and a half. It used to be much worse. I'm going to drop this Wand of Flame. I don't see myself using it right now. Drop this Wand of Enslavement. I don't think I'm powerful enough to make use of that with the enemy types that I'm facing. Um, and I'm going to poke my head into Elven 2. See what I see. It's a narrow elemental. Come on up. Oh, he pushed me away. That's mean. Gloves. Leather. Glowing short bow. Oh boy, here's a bad guy. You turkey. It's a deep elf high priest. Those guys can get quite nasty. Let me look at my other options before I consider this any further. The shoals I don't want to do. I don't like it. I could chip away at the vaults or the depths, but I'll, I guess I'll keep pushing on here, see how I do. Come on. How about a dancing evening star or morning star? I'll, I'll even, like, reduce my requirements. Ooh, he changed. Hey. Turkey. All right, thin paperback books. Well, we know how Trog feels about books. Okay, I'm gonna step back. This is a huge chamber with people who are spellcasters. I don't wanna see them. Yeah, I think you're right. I think this is just a little bit too deadly for me. And like you said about the um, abyss, for all you new players out there, what's the abyss, you might be asking. What the hell is the abyss? The abyss is a place that you can get sent to that is very, very difficult. It ends many an adventure. It's endless enemies. And it's a randomly, like, changing floor plan. And so you can die of starvation there. Um, there's all kinds of mutations and bad things that can happen to you there. I, I avoid it at all costs. Um, something that once... You can get to the point where you're strong enough that you actually go into the abyss 
to number one get the rune that's in there but number two just scum experience because it's one of the only places that has um <laughs> yeah fading is saying that the abyss level one might be easier for me i still could get mutated which i don't want to deal with um so i'm going to go to uh the vaults and just see who's hiding in there for me The vault is just generally really, really big, strong melee dudes with dragons and things at the end and titans. Oh, I need a rune to even enter the vaults. Well, I'm I'm runeless. I'm naked. I forgot about that. I can't go in there. Uh, so, I'm going to have to get a rune from somewhere. Well, I, and I guess I got to go to the depths to try to find a branch that I, is more favorable for me. So, I don't have the snake pits. I got the spider's nest. Is the snake pits in the shoals, or is the snake pits instead of the shoals? The snake pits used to be the easiest place in the game to get a rune if you have resist poison. Um, but I think they tried to beef it up a little bit. I'm going to go to the depths. Snakes or spiders, yeah. All right, here we go. Depths time. Oh yeah, spiders are way harder than snakes, in, in my opinion, too. I hate spiders. If only for orb spiders. Like, I'm not going into um, the snake pits without a large shield, because the orb spiders, they can just do 50 damage to you with their orb. All right, here's some trolls that want to dance. Yeah, look how harder... I'm sorry, look how much harder the depths is than the, the rest of the dungeon. I mean, we're looking at uh, a deep troll. Yeah, Emperor Scorps. Oh, God. A ice dragon, a deep troll shaman, and iron trolls. Uh, this is a disaster. I can take them, but, you know, it's going to be hard. So I'm going to wait. And I'm going to go back up. And I'm going to um, go berserk and kill this shaman because I think he can actually send me to the abyss. I could be wrong about that, but I think he can. I think that's in his wheelhouse. And I'm going to rest and rest and rest. All right. Boggart. Okay, let's go up. Let's kill the Boggart and fight the Iron Troll. This is a... This is a titanic battle between two juggernauts of melee damage swinging back and forth at each other here. Who's going to do cold to me? Oh, the ice dragon. Yeah. Yep. Good plan. Good plan. Let's switch off the invisibility ring and throw on the resist cold ring for the ice dragon. Giving us two levels of resist cold, which is really strong. Ow. Alright. Oops. I didn't mean to do that, but whatever. Kill him anyway. Armor is up to 15. Hey. And that actually did make a difference. Now I have 32 base armor instead of the 31 I just had moments ago. Alright. I'm going to I'm gonna turn on my regen and magic resistance right away. Because uh, I know that the dragon is right on me if I go down, and I'm going to bring him up. And that's a bunch of boggarts that I don't want to see. Let's go up. Let's fight this ice dragon just on our terms. Now look, um... Let me see if there's a description about that in the text. Um... Yeah, okay. Uh, you can see it let me turn off my logo so you can read it. Now the, the uh, zoom cuts it off. Basically what happens is it says here he tramples me. Um, and that's what caused me to get pushed back one tile. Um, it says I quote hold my ground. But I still got moved back. Um, so anyway that's what it looks like when you get pushed back. And that can be a disaster. I'm okay though. I'm going to chop him up. And 
I'm gonna go back down and try to pull up just one Boggart. Alright, I got two. That's fine. Oh. Let me immediately switch over from Resist Pull to see Invisible. Yep, so I can see that guy. Okay, there we go. We got him. The Boggarts are really not that bad if they're up on me. The Orb of Eyes has been killed. Eat. Okay. Get my magic resistance back using Trog's hand going up. That is a... Ooh, Trog. Look at this. Oh, it's a double sword. Double swords are really, really good. It's um, actually one-handed. Yeah, um, Fading is bringing up a great point that if I would have not stair danced there and just tried to tank on the steps the dragon, he could have pushed me off and then the Boggarts could have gone ape shit and, and spawned uh, enemies everywhere and I couldn't have got back up the stairs. It could have been too congested and I would have get probably lost because I haven't explored very much. So that's why I wanted to bring... That's why I stair dance. That's why you, you want to stair dance. As much as you can as a melee person. So this glowing double sword, it's probably not worth investigating, but I, I'm going to pick it up and I'm going to put it on and see what it is. Oh, crap. It's a sword of draining. I don't want to use it. Oh, it used to like hurt you if you would use this or take it off. Maybe they relaxed some of the uh, standards around draining. Anyway, I'm not going to use a double sword because as you can see, my sword skill is zero. It would have to be something outrageously good for me to pick it up and use it if it was a sword to want to level up. Oh, okay, cool. Oh, okay, great. Don't those usually ask you before you equip them? Like, do they give you a warning? Like, don't equip this. Anyway. Um, okay. Fire Dragon. Let's step up. Let's, um... Probably should have put on my other Fire Ring, but I'm just gonna go Berserk. Berserk. Berserk solves all my problems. Against melee. Yeah. Wow. My, uh... My chatbot doesn't like the word piss. I mean, you talk about... It's very strict. That's a strict chat moderator bot. My goodness. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. This is a... Etten... Um, this is another really, really hard guy. He's, like, harder than the two-headed ogre. Um, he's kind of like the upgraded version of that. He's stronger. He's got two two-handed weapons. He's got, um, look, he has a, he can hit with each hand for 45 plus his dire flail damage, right? Now, that's, of course, mitigated by my armor class, but still, that's quite substantial. So you can just see from this little example here how difficult the depths are. But this is great experience for me. Ah! Flayed ghost nightmare. Get out of here. Get out of here. Look at this. Flayed minus 28. Flaying is... Um, something that you never want to have happen to you. Let me show you the description. Opens painful, illusionary wounds on the target's body, which disappear after a short time or until the death of the caster. This cannot kill directly and is ineffective against unnatural targets. So it's kind of like misleading. Um, I really have 28 more hit points than I'm showing, but it's still something that's quite difficult. Okay, and see, watch. As after I kill him, I go all the way back up here. It's just annoying to deal with. All right, AB, let's go down. What do we got? We got Yaktar. Yakis. All right, I'm gonna go back down. 
Let me go back up. I'm gonna go down. Wait, 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 wait. Are you never gonna... What are you hitting me with? You got some kind of ranged weapon? Ah, that sucks. So this, um... Rakshasha is never gonna come up the steps with me. And this frost giant is not impressed by that. Um... I guess I'm just gonna go back up. I don't like that. I think that's enough of the depths for now. Seeing a frost giant with all those guys and the Raksha, uh, Raksasha is pretty formidable. Oh, yeah, you're right. I guess I could out try to outmaneuver him. But with all those ranged guys who are going to be throwing their crap at me, I don't want to deal with that. I want to... Um, sometimes you just have to, like, give up based on the distribution of the enemies for a while. Um, let them shake around, move to different places. So, I guess, um, I'm going to try a little bit of the spider's nest next. See if I can make any more progress there, just very carefully. Yep, wide open spider's nest, nothing worse. Okay, let's bring these guys up with me. And that's what we're going to be doing next. Um, so here we are at the spider's nest. And I plan on uh, resuming here next time. Thank you all so much. I'm going to call it a night. I'm getting, getting sleepy. Um, oh, I forgot to turn on my logo. How are you going to know what I'm thinking if that's not there? Thank you all for stopping by and watching. Um, and for chatting and learning about the game. Check the full playlist out at YouTube. Subscribe there. Follow the channel for more RPG roguelike action. Everyone, have an excellent evening. Good night, sir. I will see you all tomorrow. Peace.